And we're joined now by Senator Ted Cruz. Congratulations on your endorsement from Governor Pence. You said on Friday that America is depending on the Hoosier State. Can you win this thing if you don't win Indiana? Well, Indiana is certainly critical, and I was honored to receive the support of Governor Pence. He is a trusted conservative. He's someone that Hoosiers respect. And he has a remarkable record here in Indiana of leading with common sense conservative values, of cutting taxes, of lifting regulations, and of seeing private sector job growth as a result. And, and I think we need to bring that kind of Indiana common sense to the rest of the country. You say it's critical. Is it a must win? Uh, it, it, it is an incredibly important state. Uh, we are competing hard. I hope we do well here. I can tell you I'm barnstorming the state. We're in a bus with my family. We're doing everything we can to earn the votes uh, of the men and women in this state. Uh, we are going the distance. We are competing the, the entire distance. And, and I'm encouraged, you know, seeing Governor Pence come together, announcing this week Carly Fiorina as my vice presidential nominee. We're seeing the Republican Party unite. But, but Senator Cruz, it's still mathematically impossible for you to clinch the nomination on the first ballot. Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam says if you take it to the second ballot, it could be perceived as a steal. What do you say to Republicans who fear that? Well, listen, Martha, nobody's going to, going to clinch it on the first ballot. Nobody is getting to 1237. I'm not, but Donald Trump isn't either. It's why Donald Trump is so desperate to say the race is over now to get his media acolytes to, ref to echo that. We're going to go in into Cleveland. It is going to be a contested convention. And the reason Donald is so frenetic to say it needs to be over, it needs to be over, is that I think Donald knows he can't earn the support of a majority. And, you know, if you can't earn a majority, you can't unite the party, and that makes you a terribly weak general election candidate. But, but I believe at the convention, the, the highest party. total Trump gets it, it will be the first ballot, and, and that we are seeing the party unite behind our campaigns. Speaking of that, there are GOP party leaders who are saying enough is enough and that the prolonged fight is helping Secretary Clinton. In Colorado, a state where you got all the delegates, former state party chairman Dick Wadhams told the Washington Post, people just want this thing to be over with and we need a nominee. Martha, I recognize that, that that will be echoed by the media. I mean, listen, the media has given Donald Trump $2 billion of free airtime. What I can tell you is that people want a clear and meaningful choice. You know, Hillary and Donald Trump, they are flip sides of the same coin. They agree on issue after issue after issue. So, so you believe a Trump presidency would be the same as a Clinton presidency? I think a Trump presidency would be a disaster. It would continue us on the same roads. Listen, Trump believes in government. Donald and Hillary are Washington insiders. Both of them have gotten rich using government power to further their personal interest. And if you're fed up with the corruption in Washington, Donald and Hillary have been enmeshed Senator with that. Senator Cruz, let, let's, let's go back to that endorsement by Governor Pence. Sure. He says he mm -hmm. likes and respects Donald Trump. Do you? Uh-huh. You respect him, Listen, so you would I am support his I nomination. Am I am glad Donald ran. I think he energized and excited a lot of people. But I think his views... He is a big government li liberal, just like Barack Obama and just like Hillary Clinton. L let's take, for example, foreign policy. Martha, you've got a lot of expertise in foreign policy. I'm sure you saw Donald's so-called foreign policy speech this week. Now, number one, by all appearances, that speech was written by a bunch of Washington lobbyists. It says something that he outsources his major foreign policy address to Washington lobbyists who get rich representing tyrants in foreign countries. But this speech was a speech that reflected a weak and naive view of foreign policy. In this speech, Donald Trump once again didn't stand with Israel. You know, that's what we've seen for seven years. If you like this administration not standing with Israel, that's what Donald Trump has said he would do. That, that, that speech and, and you... was praised by Senator Bob Corker, chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, even Ambassador John Bolton, who you floated as a potential Secretary of State, said it was right on target, very strong and impressive. Are they wrong? What I can tell you is that speech on ISIS, Donald said he's got a plan, but he's not going to tell anyone what the plan is. That's what Barack Obama says. And listen, on Iran, 
Donald Trump said he would keep in place this disastrous Iranian nuclear deal. He agrees with Hillary Clinton on this. I am the only candidate running who will rip the Iranian deal to shreds on day one. And, and let me mention, Martha. And, and then what would you do? If you rip it to shreds, then what do you do? Uh, then what you do is you make absolutely clear to the Ayatollah Khamenei he will not acquire nuclear weapons. We immediately reimpose sanctions. We use every tool we can to cut off their money. They were hurting from the sanctions until Obama stepped in and sent them over $100 billion. You stop giving money to people who want to kill you. When the Ayatollah Khamenei chants death to America, he means it. And here's a very important point. These are really significant differences in policy. We ought to have a debate and discuss. And, and Senator Cruz, I, I want to make a turn here to this weekend. You know this weekend yeah. is the White House Correspondents' Dinner. A lot of fun mm -hmm. poked at Washington. Have you found yeah. any humor in this election, or can you poke fun at yourself in any way? Oh, listen, you have to laugh. I, I laugh every day on the trail and, and, and have fun with it. And, you know, part of the reason I think that we have... Ha have gone to this point, why I'm the last man standing against Donald Trump, why we're uniting the, can the, the Republican Party, is because we're running a joyful campaign. We're having fun. We're, 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 we're laughing. Um, and, and I think people can tell a joyful campaign. I am very much a happy warrior. You know, even, even when Donald Trump engages in nasty attacks and personal slurs, uh, you know, I'm happy to just laugh it off and, and, and have fun. Because when you're speaking the truth, when you're speaking from the heart, when you know what you believe, you don't have to fake it. And, and, and so, yes, that there, there is humor every day. Listen, I am sure you laughed out loud watching Donald Trump's speech on foreign policy where he talked about Tanzania. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that country, Tanzania. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe that's where two Corinthians live. I don't know. But, you know, I mean, you've got to be able to laugh and have fun and enjoy it. And, and, and that's very much what, we are, uh, what we're doing every day. We're glad you're having fun. Thanks for joining us, Senator Cruz. Thank you, Martha. God bless.